morning and welcome to Morning Java. Brought to you as always by Get Go Cafe and Market. Where right now, Dan, I got my Roadhog sandwich, all about the barbecue ribs on a sandwich on a bun. Give it to me. That's what I like in the it's summer. It's actually, it's actually a very good sandwich. It is. His hype aside. Yeah, it really I, is. Listen, when I hype things, it's because I've actually eaten them, and, and then I get into it. I don't just hype something that I've never touched He's not before. Carter for nothing, ladies no. and gentlemen. Indeed. Let's talk a little bit of football here yeah, in let's advance talk some of the Steelers getting to Latrobe. The number of storylines that are available. Dude, even on day one, the number of storylines that are available to us are infinite. But none of them, in my eyes, uh, tops just the Devin Bush scenario. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it can't be beaten. We're not gonna be able to take our eyes off him. Mm -mm. It's gonna be seven on seven. It's gonna be backs on every backers. Time he puts every on the field. Every single yeah. thing. And again, I hate to keep doing this to him, but the last time that I felt that way out in Latrobe mm -hmm. was Ryan Shazier was showing Ryan up, Shazier. a truly yeah. special player. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is that there's, like, there's, uh, there's very rarely a guy that you think is going to change everything about a team. And on offense, that's usually a quarterback. But the quarterback is supposed to do, to do that. On defense, when you get a player like this, and again, last time they traded up like this in the first round was to get Troy Polamalu. Oh, don't do that to him. And, 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 but but that's, what, that's the truth. It's the it truth. Is, and it's going it to be. And, he, and if for, for him, I don't think he cares. Everything that I've ever read about Devin Bush is he just, he'll, he'll see the hype and he'll be like, okay. He's comfortable I in, I, and in and his I like own shoes. He, he really is. And even the way he has handled since I brought it up already, the Shazier comparisons, mm -hmm. but also the fact that he's taking Shazier's place and all of the uncomfortable aspects that have come even with discussing that, he's embraced it. He walked around the field mm -hmm. with Ryan Shazier everywhere. And isn't it great to say that he was walking with Ryan yeah, Shazier, by the awesome. way? Um, and it speaks so much, I think, to both of them. It's easy, mm -hmm. to, it's easy to say, well, Ryan Shazier, what a great dude, he, which he is. There's not enough superlatives for, for what that young man ha has achieved in the last couple of years and his whole life, really. But when you look at what this kid, Devin Bush, is doing, um, I, I, I've just been blown away by it. See, the thing for me was Ryan Shazier always had the athleticism and I think the willpower coming into the league. I always liked his demeanor when he answered questions, even as a rookie. When he taught, he was very it structured. It helps that he's really, really intelligent. Exactly. Yeah. He had that about him. But the, the one thing that, that I always felt like Ryan Shazier needed to grow into, which he started to, in, to start from like 2015 until 2017, was the in instincts of a natural inside linebacker right. to, to jump into the right gap, to sit in the right spot, and to not over-pursue because you're too fast. Which he was doing. Which he was doing. Devin Bush is, is much further along in that regard as an inside linebacker as an inside linebacker than Ryan Shazier was because of his natural position within Michigan and that's why he was so highly regarded because not only was he extremely athletic not only was he extremely physical and good against the pass but he was naturally in his position and in Ohio State you saw Ryan Shazier he was just off he was just a bullet he was just flying here and flying and there and in the NFL and, and in the NFL yeah, it and, took and him quite a it, while to start to, to harness himself a little bit he talked about it a lot right but Devin Bush I think that his 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 uh, his road to his road to climb is uh, is a lot less steep in that regard for what Ryan Chazier had to go through, and I think that's what everyone should get excited about watching him in training camp. How does he do in the drills and in the situational moments? Because if he has, if he's hitting those points a lot faster, we're gonna we're gonna see a lot more of him than a lot of people expected early on in the season. I guess the question is, since you're looking for two things on defense principally. One is for Devin Bush to have an impact, and two is for the defense in general to get their hands on the football. Mm -hmm. And by that, I did use the plural on purpose. Hands. Both hands. <laughs> get possession. Possess it. Get some takeaways. Yeah. Uh, you express all kinds of optimism in studying Bush's film mm -hmm. that he's going to be, play a part in that. But he didn't do that in college. Neither he did Ryan doesn't Chazier. have fumble recoveries. Mm -hmm. He didn't have interceptions. And so what I'm thinking right away is in baseball, when you're hitting doubles mm -hmm. in the minors, all scouts will tell you those translate to home runs in the majors. Okay. 
because you end up filling out. Right. Your natural swing doesn't mm -hmm. doesn't have to change at all. Right. But all of a sudden, there's just enough to get that ball the extra few feet over the fence. Is that what happens in football? Is yeah. that how does what's your thinking here? It's a lot more about what what systems you play in. For example, you throw you you t you take out Ryan Shazier from the from that defense in 2017 and now everyone has to answer a lot more different roles and now I can't naturally but if I'm a safety, I can't naturally be in a spot that, like, for Sean Davis, he was against the Patriots. He was getting he got demolished late in the game by Rob Gronkowski because during the season it was him and Shazier covering tight ends. And once Shazier went away, that put a lot more pressure. Well, and Keith Butler got and, Davis no help. Yeah, Sean Davis deserved yeah, a better fate no, that day. Not to get sidetracked here. Yeah, Sean Davis he played. Yeah, he played great. So I know. Yeah. hard fought, on he Gronkowski. Fought, he, he, he fought his you buddy. don't even get and a for, chip at the line yeah. or some support in the back. Anyway, there, 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 there were a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. the thing with with how, with how that how that how that a player grows from that kind of success you see Devin Bush you plant him in this defense if he's able to just schematically fill the role of the inside linebacker that's that's being the mac that's that, that's that's plugging hole but also being your main guy in the middle field that allows Terrell Edmonds to not necessarily have to be an extra linebacker he can play a real safety position okay but and you're talking about support guys how does Bush get his hands on the football well because now you're not because I under Terrell Edmonds we don't have any precedent for Terrell Edmonds Right, getting his hand. I, I, the but other part of that is when you don't have to fly everywhere to cover so many different holes because you don't have a certain position available. Okay. For example, like in the past, when you had John Bostic and Vince Williams trying to cover people over the middle of the field, that wasn't going to that wasn't no, going to be your answer. End well. no. Right, and now you have a situation. We have Devin Bush and maybe Mark Barron and Terrell Edmonds. But do you see Bush getting his hands yes. on the football? Yes. And how? Because, Why? Because you don't have any evidence of it. Because when you when you look in college, he was flying. He was flowing to the ball. But it's about the players around you. And the Steelers have built a strong defensive line that puts pressure on the quarterback yes. and that needs to dump it off in shorter distances over the middle of the field. That'll give the advantage to a quicker, faster linebacker like Bush to cut under routes that he sees uh -huh. as he as he picks okay. those up. That makes sense. It, but it's it's about having the team around you to give those opportunities. No one defensive player can do it by themselves. Everyone needs teammates. He's not Carter for nothing. What's another thing he can bring? Leadership. What do you mean by leadership? When I say leadership, it's the kind of guy that when he when he speaks up, and again, he's not gonna do this right away because he's a rookie. But mm. you want and maybe he will, but you want a guy that everybody gets around. That when he speaks, everyone listens because not only does he know his job, he knows your job, and he's and he's the best at his job. Shazier, exactly. Ryan Shazier. He took control. James Ferrier. Not right away. He, it, it Ryan will be time. the first to tell time. you that it didn't happen in his first it year. It takes time for everybody. He gradually got to the point where he was, you know, he was calling the signals and everything mm -hmm. else here, but to the point where he was understanding everyone else's job almost yeah. as well as they did. As they did, yeah. And that, he could tell you where to go, what to do, and challenge you. That's the that's the big thing. Is where that, were you? Right. Where we? You know, what what are you doing? And and then that breed when you get a guy like that, that that is the center point and the centerpiece of of your team that, that that's, that's pushing that on, especially on defense. And he's your most talented guy. Right. It feeds off to everybody. Like think about when when it was James Ferrier back in the day. There was there was there was a game. He where, was not the most talented guy. No, we're he was. Not, okay, but, yeah. But everyone was around him. Right. But there was a game where Lamar Woodley had like two sacks and he was chilling on the side. Lines. And Casey Hampton said, "said Excuse me, do, do, do you think you're great? You're just good right now. You don't even know what it means to be great." And Lamar Woodley was like, "What? He was he was taken aback. Like he's the young guy doing all the things." But Casey Big Hampton snack had him for lunch, but, right? But he comes at him and he <laughs> challenges him. And and Woodley said in that playoff run because that was the 2008 yes, it season, was. it pushed him to be better, to make more plays. And then he made the sack fumble that won the Super Bowl. Okay, you're getting into the rah-rah leadership. The kind that concerns me the most right now, because I think the Steelers have mm. that on defense. I mean, I'll take... I think Cam Hayward, Cam Hayward is, is part of that, but they, they, I think they need, part a, of that. They, they need a linebacker that, um, that speaks up like that. I'll take... Well, I mean, T.J. Watt does it. Okay, they have, yeah. they have emotional vocal leaders. Vince Williams. Vince okay? Williams is... Yeah. What, what's needed more than anything else is the James Ferrier type yeah. who's on the field. And that is what's impressed me by far yeah. the most. Because we've watched Devin Bush in shorts 
running through yeah. drills. Yeah. We have nothing other than watching him drop back into coverage. Yeah. We, we say, oh, there's a, there's a really fine athlete who can go sideline to sideline. Right. We have no idea yeah, right that, now. That's what but what we do know is when Mark Barron, who just played in a Super Bowl, mm-hmm. no, 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 started, started in, Super in a Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah. comes off that sideline and tells me that kid's taking charge. That's, that, that's alarming. Okay, when Vince Williams says the same thing, we're listening to Devin Bush, we're following Devin Bush, something's going on yeah. because we're talking about mini camp. Mm-hmm. He just got here. And he, he just got he, the playbook. He just showed up probably in like a rental car or something, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah, they just handed him the yep, playbook and he's still the learning the names of the dudes in the cafeteria that are making the lunch for mm-hmm. everybody. And he goes out on the field, and he's there's something going on there, Carter. I agree, and I, I think, and yeah. th- I think that's going to almost force Mike Tomlin's hand, and this is his call, nobody else's, Very true. to have him out there and be that special case, the way we saw with Marquise Pouncey, the mm-hmm. way we saw with Ryan Shazier, mm-hmm. where your first day You're in on Latrobe. It you are standing in the middle of that defense and they say this Pittsburgh Steelers defense belongs to you young man yeah I think that's going to be vital and I think that Devin Bush the way that he's taken on other challenges I've I've watched him since he was when he was in college the way he approaches challenges he's not afraid of anything he he approaches aggressively and he says he's going to own every every, every day he's not like he's He's not like some yell "Ah!" he's not crazy he just just, says this is mine he's just he's that in control of every situation he's in (laughs) Ah! <laughs>